Hi, I hope everyone's having a good day. I'm Josh Vandre on Ansible, and today we're talking about Ansible item potency. So at the end of the session, you're going to have taken a look and seen what the importance of item potency is in working with Ansible. It's a key factor, and it's a little bit of a shift as far as checking your scripts and doing some automation with them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First off, what is item potency? It's being able to apply the same operation and gain the same result. So if you go ahead and push XYZ, you're gonna get ABC back. And you do XYZ again, you're gonna get ABC back again. It's just a constant piece for a function, it's gonna get the exact same thing back. Also in computer science, this is also looking at only changing things when necessary. So if you say your host name is 123, and you want your configuration to say that, every time the script or the playbook, Ansible, whatever it is, it's going to check, make sure that it is host123. If it's not, it's going to go ahead and change it to that. Subsequent runs should not be making changes, and that helps to reduce the stress on network devices from having changes being made. A few small examples of things that never change and are very safe to work with. Domain name. Go ahead and set the domain name to a device. If it's going to be packetpushers.net, you have it packetpushers.net every time, and it shouldn't have any impact. A host name is something very similar. And a banner. Those are important from a legal perspective or just providing information. It's good to have that kind of information in there, and it's very item potent. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in and take a look to see item potence in action. Well, let's take a look at our folder structure here. We see in the templates folder we have two new templates. We'll take a look at those a little bit later on this demonstration. So let's first dig in and take a look at our Ansible playbooks. So we're going to take a look at the first piece. We're, what we're going to be doing in this demonstration is looking at configuration of a single interface, a loopback 7, to be configured on a single router. And we're going to take a look at it and see what this should look like. On this first play, we've got the play name at the top. We've got the hosts are just router 1 that we're using, and we're using network CLI. First task 0, we have to get the credentials so that way we can log into the device. And then task 1, we're working on an interface, iOS config. We have our parent of interface loopback 7, and then we have our lines. Notice here, we're going to call out IP add. So this is something we all do. We shorten IP address from IP address down to just IP add. It's a nice thing to be able to type in. But this is the crux of things, and this is where things are going to fall apart for us on this particular playbook. This should attempt to configure the IP address multiple times. Typically in this setup, since task 2 is an exact copy of task 1, it should not actually do anything because we want Ansel to be item potent. So there should be not a change seen when we run this on the task number 2. But let's take a look. So we're going to go ahead and do our Ansible playbook. Demo item potence 1. Don't forget to ask for your password. Then as we run, we've gathered the credentials. We've configured an interface here because there was no loopback 7. And then task 2 should show up OK if the task in the playbook were set up for item potent. But here we see that it is, that's going to be a problem for, for getting item potency. And it is actually configuring, stepping through pieces. So you'll have your interface loopback 7 and an IP address set, and it'll keep on doing that every time this playbook is run. That's not the way things are supposed to work with Ansible. It is supposed to show up as OK and only do th the changes that are necessary. So let me go ahead and remove that interface and come right back. All right, we're back. I've removed the interface loopback 7 from the router, so that way we can take a look at the second playbook here that we're going to run. The difference here is task 1 and task 2. Take a look. We've actually spelled out IP address. So the IP address, it's exactly how the configuration will show up on the device. And this will go ahead and see it should come back and be item potent on the second task that we run it. And it's no problem. So let's take a look here. Ansible playbook demo 2. I'm asking for my password. Now as we go through task 1, we'll go ahead and configure that interface and actually put it on there. And then task 2 comes back and says that router 1 is OK and doesn't actually make any changes. 
we can see this in the playbook recap. It changed is one instead of two, like we saw previously up above. And now we can actually keep on running this playbook over and over again. And as it comes back, it'll start to come back as everything is okay with no changes. So again, this time we take a look at our changed. We had zero tasks and that's all is well there. I mentioned the templates that we had before. I want to take a look at the templates and we're going to basically run the same setup that we did for the item potents with a Jinja template this time. So first we're going to just take a look at what's going to be our failing one. So this is the first one. We see here, there is no actual Jinja templating and you can use this. You can say that this is the file and this is the source. Well, this source file, it's gonna to try to run a Jinja or through the Jinja engine that we talked about, but it's not gonna actually do any substitution. It will do just this configuration of interface loop X7. Once again, we have our IP space add and not address. And we'll see the same thing happen here. So we're gonna take a look at this. Playbook, again, task zero, gather the credentials. Task one, we've got our iOS config with the source with the item potent fail. So it's gonna come back and fail. And then task two is gonna repeat. So we'll take a look at it still. And once again, don't forget to put your ask vault password. If you forget to put your vault password, it won't be able to connect to the devices. All right, we've added the interface. It's shown as changed on task one and task two has changed again. So instead of removing the interface and coming back, let's just take a look at the template that's gonna be successful. So here we've got IP address spelled out properly and the spacing is correct as well. If you hit, miss the spacing where there's the IP address shows up as a space, it will actually move everything back and air out as well. So let's go ahead and just first run this Ansible playbook to show that everything is going to be in good shape here. And this will come back with zero change because it's got that same configuration. So let's say I want to show what will happen when we change that configuration and remove that space. We'll run that same playbook. And now Ansible itself airs out because it's trying to do IP address at the actual command line, not as part of a parent. So make sure that you've got your spacing properly set up. We'll take a look, fix that. So as you work with your templates and your configuration, if you're doing interfaces or anything that has a a nesting to it. Just make sure that you've got your nesting properly configured. Otherwise, it could cause issues with your config. All right, to review what we've accomplished today, I hope you've seen the importance of item potency in Ansible configuration. The whole goal is to have network devices touched as little as possible. So when you're working on building out any of your configuration pieces, make sure that you've got the setup right, you got the spacing right, use the full command, not just the shorthand IP add or anything else of that nature. Get the full configuration out there. Oh, <laughs>